Welcome to this stream. Uh, last time my mic settings were the best. It kind of sound like uh, I was forcing my voice and almost screaming in your voice. The audio was clipping and stuff. So hopefully this time it's not as bad. The downside is I had to change the gain on the mic, which means you'll hear my mouse a little bit more and the keyboard. But hopefully it's not too annoying. So, but to get to the point of this video, I want to show you how to make a dynamic pivot for an object. So, I have my leg set up here, but I do not want to start by showing that as an example. I want to do something more simple so you can see how this works from scratch. So, we have a normal cube here. I'm going to freeze transformation and history. I have a shortcut for that. It's just a modif no, edit delete by type history and on what freeze transforms um, then I also add a locator I'm going to freeze that one and I'm going to call it pivot locator and the cube is just going to be named cube and <coughs> as you may know whenever you have an object it, <coughs> it has a, a pivot where it will rotate you can move this pivot so you have it in the corner but whenever I move this pivot, like I do to this other corner, it's permanent. Uh, it's not going to be efficient to try to change this afterward for the animators because it will not stick throughout the animation. Whenever you change the pivot, it's going to mess with the whole animation and it's not useful in any way. Um, if you don't know how to change the pivot like this, um, you can press and hold the D key on the keyboard or press insert to toggle and you can change this. But I'm going to move it back to the center of the the origin of the world. So how do we actually make this dynamic? Well, I'm going to go to this called the connection editor. What the connection editor does is the object on the left, which I made a pivot locator, its outputs, like it says here, you can actually flip which one to switch. I prefer to have the output on the left. Whatever attribute I take from the pivot locator here, and connect the uh, attribute on the right hand side, the cube, it will constantly transfer the value from that attribute to the other one. So for example, in our pivot locator here, I can go down to the translate, which is these three values, x, y, and c, uh, vector three, you can see it if I expand. I can take this value and connect to this attribute called the rotate pivot. Um, so whenever I move this locator now, it will be the pivot for the cube. It may feel a bit unintuitive when if, if it's already rotated and I start to move this locator around. It, you see the, the cube moves along and it's like, oh, is that actually how it's supposed to be? Yes, it's supposed to be like this. Uh, I'll show you why. So. Uh, you see, I, I move the locator down. Uh, as if, imagine the cube here is the foot, and this is the heel of the foot, right? So, I had the heel planted on the ground, and uh, I'm going to move this locator along the bottom of the cube here. So, um, uh, as you can see, the bottom of the cube, I move it forward. It will rotate around along the bottom. I move it forward even more and this would be the tip of the toe, right? But the, the thing that makes it feel unintuitive at first, which actually makes sense, is this. Note that I, I've rotated the cube as if it's on the heel and I move it forward, the pivot forward. You see that the pivot stays under the bottom of the cube, which is perfectly correct because when it's not rotated, that's where it should be. It, it follows the bottom of the cube so when you rotate it and then just move it back and forth it moves to its initial pivot location and where it should be from the start and then rotate an object so this is perfectly fine it, it's as it should be so just keep this in mind when you're messing with rotate pivot if you're moving the object around after rotation or the pivot rather you're going to see an extra translation on of the target object. Uh, 
there, there are some issues w when you just do it like this um, if you see when I move the cube away it looks like the pivot should be here right but it's not the reason for this is that the value of the rotate pivot here is actually a, an offset from where the pivot is now you see the pivot is here the value on the locator is actually an offset from this pivot so if we look at the locator you see the values are zero if I move this forward like one unit here you see it's moved one unit forward on the cube so there are multiple ways of solving this but I'm only going to show you one because otherwise I'm going to confuse myself and you're going to lose track of what I'm talking about uh, we can one way of solving it is to actually just parent the pivot underneath the object we're affecting so you see the pivot locator is now under the cube which means it has its own local space uh, what I mean by this is the cube will now continue to use the locator as the pivot and the reason for this is I remember that I said that the, these translate values are an offset for the rotate pivot which in turn means that it, when it's parent out of the cube its values will never change when I change the cube itself it will only change when I move the locator in local space on the cube so um, doesn't matter where I move the cube now the, the, the pivot is in local space and uh, and it behaves like we want for the foot setup so let's get straight to that one otherwise I'm going to start rambling about stuff and losing your focus which I don't want to happen uh, okay so we have the foot here the leg set up very simple setup I did in five minutes even the modeling very nice leg look at that beauty uh, anyhow uh, and I want to show you first how the leg setup looks like you see you have the rotation I can move the foot around I can go in just to make sure I'm moving the right thing okay I had a foot pivot here um, and the pivot works doesn't matter where I move this thing it just works like I want it to um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit because I see I left some things from a previous attempt at recording so I'm just going to unlock I'm going to delete this thing here because we're, I'm going to get to that soon okay uh, first okay to to back off a little bit uh, like we had before we have the controller with the dynamic pivot the same thing as the cube nothing is different here um, so let, let's say I want to make this with an IK setup right so I take the IK handle tool I make a locator and I'm going to parent the IK handle to the pivot itself and the reason for this is you, you know you have typical foot roll setups and you want multiple layers of behaviors on the foot controller so we do it with things underneath the foot controller and not the foot controller itself so everything underneath here is controlling the IK setup and not this guy uh, okay we also need to do the orient constraint so um, so you see the foot follows along but then there's this problem I now want to change the pivot but the foot should not follow along you, you see the pivot works as it should but when I'm moving this locator I want the foot to stay in place and for this to work we need an additional layer on top of everything so I'm going to delete the constraint to the IK handle and I'm going to delete the target so there's no constraints so when I do this nothing happens uh, I'm going to create a new locator the, the only point of this locator is to counteract the translate when we move the pivot so the foot stays in place and this is very very simple uh, first of all I'm going to reconnect our uh, foot setup here so that we have the IK setup back in place, the foot works like we want it to. Uh, 
Now let's go to the hypershade and connect everything. So what we need to do is when we move the pivot here, the ankle pivot needs to move in the opposite direction. So it seems as if the foot is not actually moving at all. Um, so to do this, we get the foot pivot and we get the ankle pivot and if we just think for it for a few seconds how do we counteract this movement when i move this pivot forward you see we have 14 in value what we want to do i'm going to copy this manually and go to the ankle pivot i'm going to do minus 14. so whatever values i have here it must be multiplied by minus one very very simple math so we have our foot pivot our ankle pivot and then we go and find something called the multiply divide node the nice thing about the multiply divide node is you have an input and then in the second input you can either connect an object or we type it manually what we want to do is we want to invert the value which is just multiplied by minus one so uh, you can either connect through here or I prefer to actually use the connection editor I, I like that one more so we reload the left one we reload the right so you see from the foot pivot we get the translate value connect to input one you see now we have values from the foot pivot if I move the foot pivot here move it forward and we go to the multiply divide you see the value is now 19 it's going to multiply by minus 1 so it's minus 19 now in the output so we get the multiply divide and the ankle pivot we get the output and connect it to the translate note now when I actually connect this thing is the foot is going to pop back Ta-da! and we're done we don't need to do anything more here in the hypershade well we could uh, rename the multiply divide but that's not the point here so now when I move around you see we don't have this translation issue anymore but we can still rotate the foot and it doesn't matter where I put it and we can go back and the nice thing now is you, you you have the foot roll right which is the, a separate attribute which is in most rigs you from zero to one and the foot will rotate around the heel it will go back you move the pivot forward the foot rotates forward and then it lifts off the ground right but uh, we do this like this so it lifts off the ground and this behavior you can put on top of everything here so not only can you have your foot roll set up inside the foot controller but you can also add this as a separate behavior on top of everything so you can have foot roll the classic one plus the freedom for the animator to put this foot pivot wherever the animator wants and one reason why you may want to do this is for example when I rig characters I prefer to have the default location for the foot pivot at the heel I know some animators don't like this so we can just set the pivot at the ankle uh, it's up to the animator and they can use this all the time and then just forget this pivot and when they want for some reason to just move this locator back down they can do, it, do so and they have the pivot back and you can also combine this feature to maybe make a reference locator for which plane we're actually talking about sometimes you may want to put the locator on another surface you see it's not so nice to move around we may want to update that a little bit and solve it but say for example this is just food for thought for future purposes you don't actually have to try to solve this but say you have a plane like this one it could be a skateboard or anything and we could use a reference point instead of the low foot like this we could use an extra locator just to be able to set the pivot to this plane rather than the grid here because that's what is going to be right now um, whenever I move the pivot 
it's going to be in relation to this grid plane and when I rotate it it's going to appear as if it's on that plane but we may want to change this space to uh, a, a, another reference system and I'm just going to improvise here but let's say I create this plane I haven't actually tried this but let's just put the foot underneath this plane right the foot is going to follow along and I put the plane here and uh, let's see I go to grid so I can select I have the foot right and I move my locator forward the, this grid is now where is my something happen I'm not seeing my whoa where did it go I must have pressed something by accident uh, okay so I move it forward and it's going to use this plane as a reference point now and uh, I recommend looking into this um, a little bit more to experiment with so, um, so uh, I must have done something before to move the foot in some weird way or I'm not thinking about this clearly but but essentially the, the point is ah yeah it's this problem you, you see I have scaling values on the foot as I, I've noticed that scale values can sometimes mess around with <laughs> where the rotation pivot happens and such so just keep that in mind freeze the transformations not like I just did because that will explode everything but freeze it first and set up this whole system and it should work just fine for you and you can also use a plane like this one to change the point of reference for your dynamic pivot so it's more friendly to work with for the animators but hopefully you have an idea of what you can do with dynamic pivots it's not only for this foot maybe you want a different pivot for when you're holding a weapon or maybe you want to dynamically move around the pivot to follow for example the hip or the head to dynamically just set the point where you want it to be rather than having static setups where that the animators have to jump between with a setup like this you can add an extra layer which is additional freedom for the animators and I will probably only be using this dynamic pivot for myself because currently I'm the only one using my own rigs but I know that animators have different preferences and it's always better to have more options than trying to lock them into one kind of system so uh, I would recommend adding this as an extra feature on your rig so the animators have an additional option to work with rather than locking them into uh, your way of thinking and your workflow for me personally I will only go for this dynamic pivot and not do the foot roll setup because I hate doing set driven key set based setups it just takes time and you rarely use them but I know some animators like to use the foot rolls so you do both setups and then you let them have both choices to work from the more choices the better and you'll have happy animators so I hope you find this useful if something was bad in this video like some audio issues I'm jumping around too much uh, any feedback pos positive or constructive criticism I welcome both because then I can improve the videos and you will have better tutorials in the future I hope you liked it thank you for watching